A disturbing phenomenon is on the rise worldwide. Holocaust distortion. The pandemic has accelerated the issue on a global scale. Opponents of measures against the pandemic invoke and distort the crimes of Nazi Germany and its collaborators to paint themselves as victims and their governments as dictatorships. Holocaust distortion is the distorting of the facts. It's not like Holocaust denial, where the Holocaust is being denied. It is being claimed it's never happened. Holocaust distortion is more subtle. It's not easy to recognize, but that makes it even more dangerous because if you don't recognize it, then you cannot work against it, then you cannot combat it. Holocaust distortion is dangerous because it is much more cynical and sophisticated than Holocaust denial. Holocaust distortion is a global issue because it can happen everywhere uh, in different layers of the society, geographically, anywhere. All over the world, anti-lockdown protesters compare themselves to Jews living under the Nazi regime. Unvaccinated or non-vaccine is their slogan. No to discrimination, say these protesters in Portugal. Holocaust distortion from the Czech Republic to the United States. People wearing yellow stars with the inscription ungeimpft, unvaccinated, on them. The, the Jews in the 1930s, they were subject to very different forms of discrimination, of being deprived of their rights, of being driven out of their professions. No one who is walking in these demonstrations is being forced to wear a yellow star. The benefit of people who distort the Holocaust is uh, on one side, because they use this term to raise awareness for a totally different issue. Some people distort the Holocaust out of ignorance. Uh, some others have uh, an agenda behind it. Um, some just don't have enough knowledge. They want to strengthen their argument by comparing whatever issue they have, comparing it to the Holocaust, because it is often being seen in the general public as the ultimate evil. The Holocaust happened all over Europe. Nazi Germany and its collaborators systematically persecuted and murdered about six million Jews, as well as other groups, including Sinti and Roma. The murders were carried out in pogroms, mass shootings, and at concentration and extermination camps. The Nazis deported Jews to Auschwitz-Birkenau and many other camps. Upon arrival at Auschwitz, men, women and children were forced to stand in line to wait for the selection process to begin. Most were sent immediately to their deaths in the gas chambers. This is the situation to which protesters today are comparing themselves. It is plain disrespect of the victims. They suffered so much. I think it's, it's, it's not, for me, it's not human to, to show s s this sort of disrespect uh, towards uh, these people. Today, Holocaust distortion has found its way into public discourse and even into online shops. People want to draw attention to their cause. For example, climate change. Look, I don't care where you go on our planet right now. It is a global climate holocaust. Holocaust distortion can also be found in pop culture such as film titles. It can be found in literature, it can be found in film and culture, and it can be certainly found online. 
Holocaust distortion is often spread via social media and online fora. The problem is that online hate doesn't stay online. It spreads into the real world. Here, Christmas ornaments with images from Auschwitz were sold via a global online shop. Holocaust distortion has even found its way into campaigning. Using the term Holocaust in connection, for example, with this um, animal protection organization, PETA, this struck me very much because um, the campaign was called the Holocaust on your plate. The 2004 PETA campaign compared factory farming to the Holocaust. But Holocaust distortion does not only affect public debate, it can even shape national memory. The Holocaust would not have been possible without Nazi Germany, but it would never have reached the scale that it did if the Nazis did not have willing allies and other members of the Axis, if they were not able to find on-the-ground collaborators in countries that were occupied. And these collaborators are sometimes rehabilitated today, one of the most concerning and increasingly common forms of Holocaust distortion. Shockingly so given how far we are from the events of the Holocaust, are attempts variously by governments or interest groups or certain communities to make acceptable again or to rehabilitate the reputations of individuals whose actions or words or simple efforts helped lead to the Holocaust and related crimes. Collaborators and collaborationist groups are being viewed in a positive light by segments of society. For example, with busts honoring members of the Romanian Antonescu regime, like Mireka Vulcanescu. With statues of Hungarian Admiral Miklos Horty. Or with commemorations of Croatia's wartime pro-fascist Ustasha regime. 80 years after, uh, it happens sometimes that streams are streets are named after them, that there are public uh, symposia about them. It's a problem to honor the memory of, of persons who are perpetrators, uh, because uh, you are building models for your youth. And I think that criminals shouldn't be the models of behavior that you try to present to your youth. The Holocaust is and the facts of the Holocaust are often being distorted in order to um, whitewash uh, history. The nations want their glorious past. They want their, that's how they build up their national identity. I think that there are different reasons behind uh, the different initiatives of rehabilitating uh, perpetrators or collaborators uh, of, of the Holocaust. The idea you can divide the personalities of a person that you can honor someone as a scientist or as an anti-communist fighter without mentioning his role during the Holocaust. And I, th I think that's a, a mistake. Unfortunately, the process or the incidence of uh, rehabilitation of uh, personalities who are perpetrators or collaborators of the Nazi regimes can be found everywhere in the world, in, in, in Europe, in America, in Australia. Unfortunately, we are seeing this uh, phenomenon. I can think of no more overt case than this, than the case of Roman Shukevich. He was, among other things, a Nazi collaborator. There's proof that he engaged in crimes against Jews and others in Ukraine. After the fall of the Soviet Union, the Ukrainian parliament rehabilitated him in an official way. And just two or three months ago, they renamed the football stadium in Tirnopol in Shukevich's honor. And the problem with rehabilitation is you are making acceptable people who were inherently unacceptable. You're turning criminals into heroes. A particularly shocking form of Holocaust distortion is the glorification of mass murder. Every year in February, a few thousand people from across Europe come to Budapest to commemorate the German Waffen-SS and Wehrmacht. They wear Nazi uniforms and symbols and hold anti-Semitic speeches in public. We have also today the same enemy as for 75 years. 
Der Feind heißt nicht Müller oder Meier. Nein, unser Feind heißt Rothschild und Goldmann und Sachs. Holocaust distortion appears everywhere where you see extremist nationalism. Hate groups and uh, political movements that victimize one group rarely restrict their victimization just to that one group. That's why learning the lessons of the Holocaust are important, because it can give you the warning signs of an encroaching worldview of built upon hatred and ethnic racial division that can lead to real violence. Holocaust distortion paves the way for anti-Semitism, denial, conspiracy myths, and dangerous forms of nationalism. There's not a single country where you do not have Nazis marching the streets from time to time, but there's also very few countries where you do not have right-wing extremists uh, who made it into parliament. So right-wing parties in parliaments often using that platform to spread Holocaust distortion. Holocaust distortion is a threat to society because we will totally lose historical accuracy. We will, we will not be able to build on the facts. We cannot learn from them and then we can fall in the trap of forgetting and repeating. And that is why we have to stop it at an early stage. These photographs were saved from the belongings of those deported to the Auschwitz-Birkenau concentration camp. The destiny of the people shown remains mostly unclear. Many of them were probably murdered during the Holocaust. These photos give a rare insight into their lives before the Holocaust. Let's keep their memory alive, undistorted. <laughs>